Um, I think by yeah. Thank you. Uh, my question kind of loosely relates to kind of what you guys talked about in the beginning. And there was a scientist, Sam, you talked about who you said you don't know why he came to this conclusion, but there was oh, no David way. Deutsch, yeah, yeah it's, there's no way to conceivably think of AI or an alien species that um, humans can't comprehend. I, my question kind of loosely relates to that, and I kind of have to preface it with um, a quick explanation of experiments, how I think about it in my head. Um, I don't really know what the experiment is called, but it's like the red dot experiment where ex a scientist would put a red dot on different animals' mm. forehead and yeah, put a mirror yeah, in front of them. Yeah, self-recognition. Yeah, yeah. To, and kind of rank their level of intelligence or their level of um, capacity of consciousness. Yeah. And I was wondering if maybe both of you have an opinion on this, whether humans kind of have an analogous kind of red dot point where there becomes a problem or an issue where just our biology or our, our capacity of knowledge or, or consciousness you know, we might look at the answer of the problem right in the face and just not be able to see it. Like, it's right there, but yeah. we just can't comprehend yeah, it yeah. within our... Um, so I guess for both of you, kind of is appropriate because, Sam, you're deep, your primary concern is consciousness and level of thought. And Brian, I, I assume that you and your colleagues are probably going to be at the forefront butting heads with these problems. Um, so I guess my question is, do you guys think that there's a limit or can humans just continually expand basically yeah, forever. Yeah. In terms of well, it's an interesting analogy that I, I haven't really uh, thought of before, but so, so just to remind you all of what that is, there's this mirror self-recognition test that has been done on various species of animals, and most species, no matter how smart they appear in other ways, if you put them in front of a mirror, they don't warm up to the realization that that's them in the glass. They relate to that that other species as a, that, that, that image as another member of their species. Uh, so, and, and embarrassment ensues. Uh, <laughs> but there are certain species that, that very few, that can gradually recognize that, that you know, the, the, based on their own movements, that the, you know, the, the dot is on their heads. Um, and I think we are, I was so just, it's very easy to see personally. I mean, I, I think you know, it's easy to see that one as an individual has certain limitations, certain things to which one is, is cognitively and emotionally and just dispositionally closed, right? And certain games you can't play or, or you certainly can't play uh, in any, with, under any kind of time horizon that make it pragmatic for you to attempt to play those games, right? So like if you put put in a room with the, the Martians for long, like how long does the conversation have to go on to fully explore your cognitive limits? Well, you know, for many of us, not all that long, right? And then the question is how, you know, but, but it, my, my sense is that, well, it would be, this is another question I could ask you too that fits in here. If you could nominate one member of our species, past or present, who just as a, as a brain that would be best suited to, to explore the limits of human cognitive horizons in the presence of superintelligent aliens, who would, you, who would you put in that room to just say, okay, this is humanity, this is the, the best we've got in, in terms of dialogue with Sam the species. Harris. I know, Justin Bieber. No, it, yeah, um, no, no. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, and I think part of the answer to that question but, is... Well, let mean, me just give you a candidate. So it's either John von Neumann or it's Isaac Newton. You can give them all the modern understanding, just like a, just a, a brain to just, just put their... I guess I would be uncomfortable because they're really smart at certain things. Yeah. But, like, why not Shakespeare or Freud? I mean, there's just well, so many different ways of, of engaging I can, I can reality. I can tell you why not Freud, but... What's that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I stopped right. myself halfway yeah. through. Yeah. Uh, uh, but interesting, you knew where I was going with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, um, I think intelligence comes in, in a, a wide variety of different forms. And uh, it, it could be, as you're suggesting, that the answer's right in front of us and we don't see it. I, I, I suspect that's a real 
possibility. But I'll give you one data point, and I'm not sure how relevant it is, but at least it gives me some sense of optimism. When I was a graduate student a long time ago, it seemed like the amount of material that you needed to learn in order to even begin to do your research for the degree, the doctoral degree, was like incredible, right? I mean, so how are you going to study all this and then have time left to do the project, but yet somehow we're able to do it. And now, you know, 35 years later, whatever it is, with all of the progress that's been made, I mean, the kids that come into string theory, they have to learn everything that I had to learn back then, and they have to learn the past 35 years of it too, and yet they still have to be done in the same number of years. Yeah. And somehow they're able to do it. So, so it feels to me that... And they still have Instagram accounts to tend to. <laughs> that, that's the amazing thing. And, and Fortnite, you know, they still play Fortnite, <laughs> you know. Um, so, so it strikes me that there's some way that we're able to adapt to the ever greater volume of, of information and knowledge that we need in order to make progress. So I guess what I'm saying is the fact that we've not hit that wall gives me hope that we're pretty good. We're pretty flexible. But could it be, logically speaking, that there is a wall and all that we're looking for is just an inch beyond that wall and we can't quite see through it? Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of more what I was, not necessarily an individual, single human that represents the best, but more like, you know, 200 years ago in terms of evolutionary time, we're pretty much the same, but drastically yeah. different. Like, will that just continue? Will we eventually be the green-headed aliens coming down with super magical technology, or will we get to a point where the well, entire as, lo as long as we keep going, I mean, I, th I yeah. think it's c the leverage is we culture. I mean, yeah. we, we we keep we keep porting our not our all the gains into culture, and then there's a kind of a chunking. I mean, this this explains how each new wave of graduate students can kind of recapitulate the history of of intellectual progress in physics in their own lifetime and you know, know more about physics than Einstein did and then, and then keep going. Um, 